I'm playing the new Jackson Brown guitar built in Montana uh, and offered from the first of this year on. This new model for us is the, uh, I guess, the culmination of more than 10 years of collaboration between Jackson Brown and the folks in Montana. Um, back in 94 at Gibson Centennial, we built a bunch of guitars in Montana that were called historic uh, offerings and each month we offered a different guitar and we built some actual Roy Smeck variations at that time. Uh, Jackson got a hold of one and from that point on has kind of badgered us, why don't you do that, why don't you build this, why don't you do that? And having been friends for so long we kind of felt, well yeah why don't we do it? So we would build a guitar and we'd send it to him and he'd go, oh that's great, it's, it's not right but it's, it's great. <laughs> Well, what's not right about it? Well, you know, the neck's not right. Or this isn't right. Or, you know, I want the string height more like this. I need more articulation. I need, you know. So over the year, we have distilled, not day after day after day, but literally over the last 10 years, and kind of intense for the last year and a half, two years, what it would take to put a guitar that he would feel comfortable playing on stage in a live environment instead of having 12 original guitars that he used throughout the set. He could pick up one guitar or have a number of new guitars and not take out his heirloom treasures with him on the road all over the world. Well, we finally did that. And it took a long time to kind of refine the, the requirements. Because when an artist or an individual tells you what they want, the first obstacle you have is language. When somebody tells you what they think they want and what you hear may not be what they truly want to say, or maybe you misunderstand. When they say they want this type of texture, what does that really mean to them? It's like describing color. Is the blue robin's egg blue or is it periwinkle blue? I mean, it's, they're both blue, but they may not be exactly the same. Now, Jackson's got ears like a fox. My ears have I got a chance to do a lot of shooting in my life. I've been around loud machinery. I've played a lot of rock and roll. I've, I've, uh, I've not protected them. He, on the other hand, has learned to use them as his most useful tool. I mean, besides having this imaginative ability to write these incredible lyrics and to come up with sonic passages that are classic and write incredible lyrics, this guy listens to what he's playing, and he listens to music. And that's why it takes 12 guitars for him to do a set, because every one has an appropriate voice for the music that that song was written for. In fact, that's one of the guarantees that Gibson makes, that every single guitar that we make, we guarantee every one of them to have music that hasn't been written in them yet. And you just get to pull it out as time would allow. But this guitar was built not to be a replica of history, but to be the modern version of Jackson's desire for guitar that he could share with the world. And I want to tell you, he's bought a whole bunch of these since we have offered it, both with the electronic package, the AccuVoice that he prefers, which is sonic excellence as far as I can tell, and many others. To date, it is the most expressive replication of acoustic sound that I'm aware of. The guitar is big. It has volume. It doesn't feed back. It can be played in front of an orchestra, in front of a, uh, a huge, huge amplifying system. It just plays. It's an acoustic advantage at that point, but it has exact characteristics of the sound of that particular instrument. Now, not every one of these guitars that we build are identical although the intent is that they would be, they're just as individual as you and I. So every one of these guitars has got its own personality, its own characteristic. One of the things that was important to Jackson, just from a, uh, a personal lifestyle choice, was he wanted to go with a material that was not going to be an endangered species. He didn't want to use anything from the rainforest that might uh, somehow cast a shadow on the intent of his music and style and, and things that were important to him. Having built a lot of firearms in my life, I've, I've uh, 
been keenly interested in the highest grade uh, shotguns, uh, rifles forever. And usually the wood of choice for those is what is referred to as European or English walnut, Turkish walnut. That's the walnut that we eat. An English walnut is grown in forests all over the world, just naturally. But it was also brought to central California um, probably right after the gold rush. And people learned that the native trees, the Clara walnut, were not capable of producing a nut of good enough quality to actually market. So they've learned that if they were to graft an English walnut to that rootstock, that they would get an abundant crop of the nut that we eat, the English walnut. Well, as those trees have matured over the last hundred plus years in different orchards and, and uh, uh, home sites across California, they eventually get too big that you can't pick them anymore. You can't get to where the nuts are, or the tree is damaged by lightning, or it just gets to be too large. So if it's in an orchard situation, what they do is they harvest the tree, they cut it off at the ground, they pull the root out. Unfortunately, they take the entire tree to the edge of the orchard and they burn it. And they plant a new tree because what they're after are the nuts, not the wood. But for me, I'm after the wood. And having worked with this wood for so long, learning the characteristic feel of the cut of the chisel against that wood, I never tried it before, but I suggested that we build a guitar out of English walnut. And that's what this guitar is built out of. Back and sides are of English walnut. Now you can't see, I don't believe, at this point, the striation of the grain pattern, but the wood itself is it might be hard to describe if you're not a wood nut, which I've been accused of being one. This wood has a texture that is so dense um, without being brittle as Brazilian rosewood might be on one, one hand. Uh, it's almost not able to be cut in some directions where English walnut seems to cut about the same in any direction, whether you're running with the grain, across the grain, or through the grain. So you have a wood that is dense. You just heard the sonic possibility of the wood. It is expressive. We've got this enormous cavity to produce the sound. What we believe is happening by using a 12 fret neck and pushing the bridge plate down into the center of the plate we have this diaphragm working. We've got a reduced sound hole sort of in the middle of the guitar at this point. And it gives a moment, and it may be a fraction of a section, a second for the sound to actually live within the guitar before it's exhausted out. So we mature that sound, and the back and sides are actually flavoring. They're, they're giving that uh, um, kind of the personal characteristic of that wood to the overall richness and tonality of, of the guitar. So we're using the physical shape, the materials, the design, the desire of the artist. We put all this together, and that's the Jackson Brown guitar that we offer today. Both available with the AccuVoice or in the acoustic version as I'm playing here today.